old religion. But so any in any country, any place, the previous religion would have been the old religion. And I suppose, you know, in in Christian Britain, the old religion would have been pre-Christian religions, which is what they're referring to, which would have been Roman and um, Saxon, and then eventually Celtic, and then. Pictish and mm -hmm. whatever else preceded all of that, you know, um, history of the British Isles. And, oh, let's not forget the Vikings, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that soup um, going on. Um, so these terminologies, so I think the term old religion is fine. And the reason why I don't mind it is because I don't think we are <coughs> necessarily practicing the religion of pre Christian Britain, but we, we are in our minds worshiping the oldest gods in the world. So I don't mind that catchphrase, don't use it very much anymore, but I do think in craft it probably originates from Leland's Gospel of Religious. Agreed. That's my theory, I don't know for a fact. Um, but we do, you know, encounter these different time periods in craft. So in Levi's generation, I think it probably was Gramazzi who was revitalizing that word. Revitalizing Leland. Yes, yeah. revitalizing Leland, revitalizing that word as well. So it, he was popularizing it for sure. Um, but then again, he was just a pile of regurgitation. <laughs> I, I just want to comment Still my turn. Really quickly. <laughs> She's not letting it happen. No, no, no. And Gramasi, actually, I don't have a Gramasi book on my yeah. bookshelf. For the same reason, kind of. I'd been studying occult and witchcraft subjects for quite a while before Gramasi came on the scene. And I read a couple reviews, and I read a couple first pages at Barnes & Noble. Mm. And I went, eh, nah. Well, because it is, I just didn't, it's regurgitated it information. I can't um, say why. But it if it was the first, th he, it was he was really popular with anyone in America who had Italian blood. Yes, that's right. And they yeah. were all jumping on the bandwagon. The thing is about Italian witchcraft in America is almost ninety percent of every Italian witchcraft person you meet in America calls themselves Strega and says they're hereditary, like. And it's only in America. And 90% uh, of us are Anglo-Saxon, Viking, yeah. German. I've seen, I have already, seen right? like witches Americans. who operate in Italy, and they don't call themselves Strega, and they do not claim to be hereditary. So I find it interesting it's only American. They also go to Mass a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so Fun fact. It does happen. But um, anyway, back to the subject. So I suppose for me tonight, I wanted to discuss things that we do that we can discuss publicly that are actually really old that people assume was invented by Gerald Gardner or yep. the modern movement of witchcraft somehow that we invented it Margaret Murray invented the whole thing you know I think Margaret Murray gets an uneducated bad rap you know because she had some flaws in her work and what I always point out to everyone is that all anthropologists and archaeologists of her time period had flaws in their work. She lived at a time when people were saying the Druids built Stonehenge. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't just her. So, yes, she did have flaws in her work. Some of it's very outdated. I think some of the hypothesis, if you can, if you can get past the lingo, still holds merit. But she was very well educated on history. She wasn't just pulling things out of the imagination. Mm -hmm. So everything she had, well, maybe the Joan of Arc stuff was out of imagination. Some of it's a little far-fetched. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there were some stretches. But she also did sort of elaborate them as theories. You know, yeah. So she never said, this is a fact. You know, um, So yeah, it's there. But I think 90% of people that criticize Margaret Murray have never read her books. I literally just watched a video of a very brilliant um, anthropologist student who his hypothesis was about the occult world. And he just briefly, he was more interested in Nazi Germany and what happened there. Yeah. But he just briefly slammed uh, Margaret Murray and you know said, oh, she invented Wicca and blah, 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 blah. And so I, in his comments, was like, well, she wasn't uh, a witch and she didn't no. invent Wicca and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we got a conversation. I said, have you ever read any of her books? He's like, no, actually, I haven't. I've just heard this stuff, you know, and this is an educated person. And I said, well, perhaps you should read her books before you establish an opinion and state it publicly. So if you read her books and you're like, this person's horrible and stupid, fine. But I've read her books and I didn't think the entire thing was stupid. I thought there was a lot of really useful information. Oh, in I agree. Um, outdated as some of it is, yeah. you know. But even when I read the Joan of Arc bits back then, I was like, oh. and you she know? admits yeah. it's outside of her original yeah. expertise. Even she's very honest about that. She was an Egyptologist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was being written at a time where the subject of witchcraft and being a woman in that field were both taboo. Um, so tonight we're going to start. We could start uh, taking phone calls, or we could start asking each other questions about yep. things. 
So um, one of the things that I um, was thinking about when I started this show were Facebook conversations I've had with people over the years. Mm -hmm. I remember one in particular was a gentleman saying there was never a religion where there was a god and a goddess. There was no sacred couple. It's totally made up. It never existed historically. Think about the Garden of Eden. Yes. Um, Sacred couple. I Ah. just instantaneously pointed out some things and he's like, oh, I know all that, Brian. Why didn't you just say Yeah, this? I know this argument very well. Yeah. Um, there is a belief. Here's the thing that's very difficult to understand. Um, and, it, and I'm doing this right now. I'm doing a study of a book that you would love. It's called Cults of the Roman Empire. It's a little it's from 1994, I think. So it's a little dated, but it's still sort of the cornerstone book on the mystery cults in Rome. There's been a lot of books after it, but honestly, they're kind of weak. This was the original. I forget his last name. I feel bad it starts with a T. If, you, if you're on Google, uh, look it up and give it to us in the comments, and I'll say it out loud. But it's a brilliant book. It goes through the cult of Isis, the cult of Magna Mater, the cult of the Syrian goddess, which was huge, Mithraism, and then small occult organizations that flourished in Rome. I don't know if I've ever heard of the Syrian goddess. Yeah, yeah massive, massive what, thing. Does she have a name? Um, it's, it depends. In some places, she was Atargatis, you know, the, the androgynous goddess who was mutilated. And then in some places, she's, the Romans would call her Bellona, the war goddess. Oh, okay, yes. And okay. then sometimes, mm-hmm. you see, it's hard to read. I know her as the Bellona. Yeah. yeah, and they would call her like Venus Orania and stuff like that. So it's weird because they I just don't know much about that cult, though. Most people don't mention it. But yeah. it was huge. It was huge with, um, with immigrants. But I'm reading this book, and it says, you know, it's hard for us to understand that when we think of paganism, right, paganism. we Christian think, religion. It, yeah, it's huge. It's this huge term. But people need to understand that at the tail end of of paganism, of the pagan era, before the triumph of Christianity, um, this belief that it was the folk folklore that was real witchcraft, that's not true. Um, They were Christianized. The aristocracy were the last people to give up paganism. Mm. And the aristocracy were invested in a very deeply philosophical, neoplatonic kind of paganism. You're talking about the aristocracy of like Italy. Of Rome and and, and Greece and Egypt, Mm -hmm. and Ptolemaic Mm -hmm. Egypt. And probably most of the lords and ladies of all of Europe. I think so too. I think so too. They were all trying to be Romans. That was where the power Hector is correct. It is Robert Turkin. Robert Turkin's book, Cults of the Roman Empire. But he talks about how like they very much were Neoplatonists. They were educated. They did not view the gods as individualized intelligences. They thought that, for example, when you were initiated into the and that was devices, always true. Only the peasants ever thought that. But if don't you, you were, think they thought they were God incarnate for the people? Who some of them? These aristocracy. Don't sometimes, they? In their sometimes. They would like bring that feeling down. You get I mean, that socially, in the, culturally, where they're like, "I need to be here because you get that in the, I'm the imperial. Representative. Well, the, in the imperial Roman part. emperors adopted the belief of the pharaoh system out of convenience. I mean, yes. Julius Caesar brought that in with Cleopatra, and it yes. continued. But my point was, is that, that, that comes from Egypt, really. Mm-hmm. In those cults, like for example, the cult of Isis and Serapis was widely popular, and it was a very moralistic religion. They were they had strict dietary laws and moral laws. And a lot of times the Romans hated the cult of Isis because the cult of Isis was purer than they were. And then they hated the cult of Magna Mater because the cult of Magna Mater was too crazy. So, but in all of these instances, many of the initiates wrote prayers. We still have them, people like Apuleius and whatnot, who say things like, this is Isis and she is every goddess. You know, and this is very common. This is not some weird tangential thing. This is many, many initiates of many mystery cults in the Hellenistic world saying Isis is Demeter of Eleusis, Isis is Isis in Egypt, she is Juno Sospita in Rome, she is Lucina who gives birth to children. I mean, over and over again. So this idea that it's new is just nonsense. I mean, it's so, Ellie, what about this Adam and Eve thing? Oh, I was just thinking about the eternal Do you have couple. a theory about that? Well, it's kind of Kabbalistic, really, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's what I would look at it. I would say, okay, there's the one God, Keter, and then he comes down and says, well, I need two things to start having sex with each other so I can get more things. Hokma, Bina. Yeah. Tie it together. Bring in, bring down some spirituality and tea for it, you know. I think it's a fabulous plan. The whole tree of life, I think, is really brilliant. But it wasn't even about the couple. I was just, you were just talking about that the idea was fraudulent. It's just, well, it's the other thing, too. Thought, well, that's um, just silly because if we, we have so much to contact. want to go back in time or back to certain more rural places, if you go into tribal systems, and this is true of Native American, this is true of the Tawny Indians, this is true all over the world, right? If you go into tribal systems, there's always some fertility couple mm-hmm. 
in the gods uh -huh. or in their spirits that represent that divine couple. Yeah. And they usually oversee the agricultural cycles of nature in some way. So, and I mean, even people who are not religious go back to um, you know, that whole basic idea of the oldest deities found in, in humankind, you know, Stone Age deities. Yeah. Fertility symbols, you know, some people say, well, we don't really know it's a goddess, it's a woman fertility, but obviously we can tell that there's a female quality to fertility that is being viewed, and there's a male quality to hunting that is being viewed. Uh, most people do believe they were deities or spirits of some sort. So that's always been with us. It's not really a new concept, no. and it is in the witch trials. You know, you do have Deanna and the devil, for lack of better terms. So, or for not having better terms, so maybe they are the best. Terms. Maybe they are the best. Terms. I'll take them. I'll take them. D and D. I was thinking of something, um, and I and this might I don't want to get too long winded, but I think there's this like framing that needs to be said here that I think has really been hitting me lately. I sometimes struggle, honestly, as a witch, with the the sort of lack of what I would call theologians in our religion, and here's what I mean by that. In Oma, we don't have theologians. We have two things. We what have, am I, chop liver? No, no, no. I have a point. I have a point to all this, I promise. We have, on the one hand, academics who, who, have, to enter, who have to enter the world of academia yeah, that's right, that's right. and pretend that they don't believe in anything to succeed. It has to be secular. Mm -hmm. and then, or we have people who are self-proclaimed experts who are not, frankly, very educated. Yeah. What we don't have is what every other major religion on earth has which is a group of people who are academically rigorous and believers. Yeah, true. So, like, we do not have, like, in, if you're a in Christian... In your own universities, where they really... Have you found yes. that there's so many, and it is usually men, um, want to be academics who are writing books, and they can't commit to anything because they feel like it makes them look stupid. Exactly. They can't believe anything because they're not... They're generally not genuine academics. They're trying to be academicians. And so, in, if I was a Christian... But there's no financial service in our world, like in Catholics or, or Episcopal true. study. There's but that's a place not, you can actually go live and be paid and eat see, and study. The money and thing, we don't provide you're, that. That's not what I'm talking about, to All be right. honest. I know, I know. It's too what really, exists, just not in any collective What way. I'm really trying yeah. to get at is, we used to have this in the non-Christian world with the, the, you know, the Platonic school and stuff like that. And the Catholics still have it. Right. Mm -hmm. Most religions, you could be someone who's like, I'm going to study the Bible. I'm going to be able to read it in its original language. I'm going to be able to understand understand the historical concept you know behind it i'm going to know what second temple judaism was where the new testament was forged i'm going to understand what was going on in turkey and the levant but i also believe the bible's the word of god right that's normal in, in christianity yep. we don't have that so if you're ronald hutton and you want to get a phd but you secretly believe in the old gods or maybe you don't i'm not going to speak for him he still has to write books under the assumption it's not real mm -hmm. That happens a lot. No other religion has to do this. Do you think it's changing just a tiny bit? Right? Well, I mean, I think... Honestly, no. You know, I, I don't consider myself an academic, but I definitely think I'm educated on the subject of witchcraft, self-educated on the subject of witchcraft. Well, we all are. And I definitely believe... There's no educators for us, as yeah. I just said. No, we're um, normal educators. I think that it's up to the priesthood... In, in our religion. ...to do our best to continue to elevate this, mm -hmm. this topic. And I, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show in particular was because mm -hmm. there is so many misunderstandings. Yes. Like you'll have people say, um, I've, I've literally heard people, and I think, I don't want to misquote anyone, but I've literally heard people who are from the academic world who are writing on the subject of witchcraft say there were no equinoxes and solstices in the British Isles until the Vikings brought it. And I'm like, hello, the stone circles were already there. Yeah. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize they were there. You, we just don't have documentation of who and how they were being used. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they make these blanket statements and they do it in this sort of, you know, uh, it, here's a popular one. There was no horned god. There were many horned gods. Thank you for stating the obvious. Exactly. You know, um, but that has nothing to do with religious belief. You can realize, as I do, that there were many horned gods or many goddesses and still believe they're one. You know, going back to that Neoplatonic belief. Yeah. I believe all the horned gods are the same horned god. 
I realized they manifested differently in different places. That's a spiritual belief. That's, that could be an academic belief when you realize that all these gods evolved the same way people did. We all came out of Africa, we split up, we walked around, we carried these religious ideas that evolved yes. based on yeah. our environments yeah. and our experiences, which were similar because we're all people on the same planet. And we moved and we interchanged and we moved and we interchanged. So all of these gods are just as related as all as we are, all of these religions and gods. So it's uh, silly to me to go on these bandwagons where you have to be like, you know, I'm not so stupid that I believe there was one horny god in Europe. Like, anyone who has to state that is insecure. But isn't it so annoying that this is what controls the conversation? No, no. Christian theologians at Duke Divinity School have to sit around and have somebody, their professors are not going, by the way, you know people don't raise, you know, rise from the dead, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, but we believe that because we're Christians. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're going to go ahead and get past that and actually talk about some serious things we care about. We, we can't even get to that stage in contemporary witchcraft or contemporary paganism because we are so stuck on this well, you know, I'm trying to look. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Sometimes it depresses me, and I love that we're talking about the old religion, that the only place I go to is ruins, right? You know, if I'm going to go oh, to a yeah. pilgrimage. Why can't we ruin. have nice things anymore? Or if I'm going to read a book, it's written by somebody who doesn't believe the gods that he or she is writing about are real. Like Robert Turkin's book is incredible, but I'm 100% sure that Robert Turkin does not pray to Isis. And it's like, we have this missing from our religion, because frankly, every other religion has this. If I was a Muslim... I could find unbelievably educated, beautiful writers who believed with all their heart that the Archangel Gabriel dictated the Quran to Muhammad in Mecca. But I, I don't have that. So where did it break down? It, I mean, I said it was I a think funding it's... issue today, but when did it stop? Because we did have the Druids who studied and wrote. We did have certain traditions in Alexandria thing. up to 300 AD. We I had think it's, traditions we, being... I think it's a product of what's happened within Christianity that all Europeans, whether we want to admit it or not, and probably most of the world, are affected by the decline of Christianity. Yes. And we really, like, we saw the fall of so many TV evangelists and things like that, you know, uh, the Catholic priest scandals, that there's a jaded concept going on in religion, and a lot of European countries don't even believe in any religion. So there's all that going on, and witchcraft emerged in the 50s and it's kind of been along on that ride. So I think a lot of people were attracted to it who were already dissatisfied with other faiths and looking for something, you know. Um, and I think part of it might have been because originally people believed that it was a continuation and then the rose-colored glasses came off and they didn't believe that anymore. So that left some, you know, that left some tastes in mouths. Absolutely. I think it's also just the validity game of people trying to like prove how real they are. That's huge. Um, I think it's a complicated psychological issue, but the reality of it is, is that what we're doing, what Gerald Gardner was doing, what the occultists were doing in the initial occult movement are all coming from really old places. Yes. All magic comes from pre-Christian religion. You know, and so even if you're a practicing magician, you're drawing upon something that is older than Christianity. And Ellie, to answer your question a little from my perspective, when you say, you know, when did it break down? Here's the problem. Large institutionalized religion can have scandal yeah, yeah. and can have problems and can have breakdown you and can, can have it. crazy belief. Crazy just takes a few generations to become normal. When Christianity first came on the scene, the Romans thought it was lunacy, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so did the Jews. So did religious Orthodox Jews. They thought it was horrific. Mm -hmm. When Buddhism came to China, the Confucians thought it was disgusting. Crazy. The idea of abandoning your family to go live in a monastery would have been horrific to a Confucian scholar. So every, witchcraft has not had enough time to bake in the oven Aww. for us to get away from this idea that we're crazy. Maybe we shouldn't you know use I mean? the terminology baking in an we're oven. We're early bakers. You know what I mean though? Like, <laughs> it hasn't had enough time in the world. Maybe we shouldn't cook witches at all. I mean, to, maybe get under that, um, to get away from the microscope. As John Belushi says, we're master bakers. Hey, you know. but starting this show, thanks to Brian and Levi, and bringing our books and where we're reading and what we're studying. Somebody told me we interrupt you too much. Who did that? I don't know, but I just interrupted you. God, probably. Because <laughs> it's I wanna, true. I want to feed right off that idea. We all do. I, I, during this week, I thought about um, what the old religion and kind of some trigger words on that and then what we actually practice and do today. Um, 
just a few ideas. The Key of Solomon is in modern witchcraft, British yep. traditional witchcraft. It's in the Book of Shadows, 14th or 15th century. That's at least 500 years ago, and that's in there. Old God forms, we consider them to be some of the deities that have been with us for thousands of years. My childhood response, why I kept going backwards to look for deity, was, you know, born in the 60s, I heard the Christian storyline, and, you know, those were the things, and I was like, I don't like that one. I want to pick another one. <laughs> Where's some other gods I can choose from? And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, yeah, there's got to be more than that one. <laughs> and so I started reading mythology, and my parents let me bring home, I brought home records from the library, the public library, which I went to before I started kindergarten, and we had a single record record player, and I kept rent checking out a series on Greek and Egyptian myths, and they were read. I love that. And you play the that. record, and then I took them back, and I was like, oh my god, I want some more of these. So I was like, hey, I found some new gods. There's, they're older, but they're cooler. <laughs> they are cooler. Okay. This Listen, is so, better so, clothing. And, and religion. What, what about religion? What does religion answer? How the universe is created? We have that? Yes. Uh, what's humans' place in the universe? We have that. We have that. Life after death. We have that. Huge consideration for us. Um, eternity and how to escape suffering. That's part of a ri original religious question. Mm. But we have a lot about reincarnation yes. and, and, the, and movement of the soul and care of the soul, don't we? Can I make one quick comment yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah. The famous theologian Friedrich Schleiermacher, he was the sort of father of liberal theology. He was the first Christian to sort of say, okay, we're going to have to deal with the Enlightenment. Um, and he sort of reigned supreme into the neo-Orthodox movement of people like Karl Barth. But Friedrich Schleiermacher said, what atheists and secular humanists do not understand is they are convinced that the only reason you're going to be religious is because you're afraid to die um, or because society told you to. That's right. Burning and he hell. said, it's just not true. People, uh, many, many people in this world, including witches, choose the religious and spiritual path for fulfillment, not out of fear. And, but, but I think a lot of our critics don't understand that. No. They no. literally think it's just well, because you're scared of the real world. Organized religion did have a lot of basis in fear with it, within the Judaic, Christian, Muslim world. Yes. You know, they have consequences for not doing what they do. But, like, Buddhism doesn't. Well, there's a lot of hell in Buddhism. Is there? It's just not permanent. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's so that's probably more real. I think some hells. people need to go to hell for a while. Just for a touch. Just for <laughs> some time. You go, you'll spank around, and then you just come back and you're That dead. sounds more realistic to me. Like these, the principal's office. These are yeah. my three ideas of cults. And I didn't look up the word cult. Do you know what it means, actually? Cult, well, well, C-U-L-T. It was originally called the witch. Before it was called the old religion, it was called the, the witch, witch cult. cult. Yeah. But, but, um, but cult yeah. is like, what does cult mean? Like Cult is, is a small group. Small so group. like, okay. that, these so, cults in Rome were Or a separate group. Like, the mystery cults could be really big, but they were initiatory, so you had to be in them. Um, once you were in, there was, you know, it's nothing to do with the cults that we think of today, you know, like I know, but I want to talk about Waco, Texas. Yeah. Texas is my, no, I know, not, not like that, not, not jello drinking, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> I thought about ancient religions, and I thought about, you know, history, and I thought, okay, what, what were the old cults that we might all be able to name, and how, does, how is it reflected oh, today? Oh, there's so many I love. Okay, but the ecstatic cult... Like the oracles of Delphi, or people who are mystics that are going to go into trance. Dionysian no, mysteries. No, Dionysian. Initiatory, I think of as Eleusis, but there's the initiation cult, where you actually are taught and understand certain Isis, mysteries, and Mithras. then you go through a process to, taken by priesthood to come out on the other side. Certain just then, simple temples sometimes, too. Yep. You know, where you were just initiated into yes. that temple and served at that temple. So ecstatic cult, initiatory cult, and fertility cult. Yeah. I know that in Rome, Which is always, always, and these are very ancient things, even like in a fertility cult, the man and the woman would have gone on to their new land that they were digging to plant some things in to eat, and they would have laid down and had intercourse on that property to say, we are embedding this with our fertility energy, all the animals would be doing their thing, and I mean, how old is that? Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe 30, 40, 50,000 years. Right? So I, I'm reading Robert Turkin's book. We're still book. doing it today, by the way. I'm reading Robert Turkin's book, and he's talking about the mystery cults were really big on processionals in Rome. Oh, wow. And so they would have the Navigidium Amicitis, you know, the boat of Isis, or they would have the mm -hmm. Magna Mater. Because that's what they did in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, they would have the stone of Magna Mater, and they would carry it through, and all of the Gali would walk and beat the I don't know if stuff. they did that in... Other, you know, like, I don't know if they did that in, like, Mesopotamia. They did in Egypt. In Egypt, common people weren't allowed in the temples. 
whereas they were in Greece and Rome. So the Egyptians would bring the statues out. You know, we do it in Catholicism today, but it mm-hmm. all comes from Egypt. We're so doing it right, right now. What I was going to say is, as I'm reading this book, my partner right. texts me pictures of the boats and floats that are being oh, prepared right. for Mardi Gras that have Thoth on them and Ra and Isis. Good and people. it's like, we're, through yeah. an orgiastic, yeah. reveled yeah. crowd. But it just shows there's too many people to get inside the temples, really. Yeah. I mean, it's this, the they just had a different belief in it. You know, yeah. the, the, the Greeks and the Romans would let people come into the temples. And they had open air temples. The Egyptians were not allowed in the temple unless you're initiated. Into the Holy of Holies. And then yeah. the inner sanctums, you had to be a certain grade or whatever. But it still goes on. The Greek Orthodox does it today. They've got a. If you ever get to go into a Greek Orthodox church, blah, 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 can't talk, <laughs> which are very beautiful. There's an inner sanctum where only the mm-hmm. priests mm-hmm. get to go in there. Yep. You know, um, Catholics don't have that that I know of anyway. Maybe at the Vatican. No, the Western Rite Church yeah. does not have the, the iconostasis that separates. Eastern Rite Catholics do, but Western Rite Catholics don't have that, that separation. But don't you think my three cult ideas were very much practiced in modern British Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's and they're very old. One of the things very that I sort of was trying to highlight in Initiation to Witchcraft was that the modern, what we call the modern occult movement, right, which is really kind of going on in the 1900s, Mm-hmm. mirrors and functions exactly the way that the mystery cults did. You know, if you go back and you look at the mystery cults, like the cult of Dionysus has a crossover with the um, cult of Eleusis. They yes. join each other. The cult of Isis has a crossover with the cult of Eleusis and the cult of Dionysus. You know, all these cults, the cult of Mithra, um, there's a temple in London that they found a statue of Isis and Serapis in the cult of in Mithra. The Mithraeum, yeah. They all had these crossovers. It's very similar to what happens in the modern occult world where you've got crossovers between the Golden Dawn and the Masons and the modern Druids and the OTO and witchcraft. There's all these crossovers. Mm-hmm. We literally are all initiatorily related to each other. Yep. And they yep. were then too. So it... You know, and well, if you want to look at it, you know, there's Masonic information that's, that where they claim they are connected to the cult of Eleusis. Yep. You know, so all of these things are mirroring what was going on in the past, whether or not you think there's a <coughs> continuation of actual initiation or whether it's a resurrection of the ideas. There's nothing new under the sun. Even, yeah. Yeah. even if there was a break, and we obviously can document some places when there were strong breaks in the Western occult tradition, Yes. but it picks back up, and it's beautiful oh, how it... to mention the Catholic Church adopted some of it, didn't That's they? right, but it always yeah. picks back up, and it's beautiful and fluid and still is representing the, the meat of what, was, of what has come before, and I think that proves it's continuous. Isn't the Pope really just the new pharaoh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. You know, there there is a deep reality to that. And, and in the world today, I mean. Or what is the leader of the Greek Church? Because that's just as valid. The patriarch. Yeah, or the patriarch, just as valid. The patriarch. We yeah. never think about that in the West. That that is just as valid. But it is. Yeah, Alexandria has its own pope too. Yeah. The pope of Egypt is the pope. And of we're just all by himself. And we're just as so diverse cool. religiously. <laughs> we're just as diverse religiously and yeah. philosophically as we were ten thousand years ago, probably. And also, and that's still going on. We all don't believe the same. I things. also want to say what's something about calling it the old religion. And something, and Brian I don't and Ellie, tend to use that phrase anymore. I, I no. did when I was younger. But, Brian and Ellie yeah. have both, and I, have all brought up the mystery cults a lot. Here's the reason I think we do. This is what separates initiatory craft as an old version of religious faith from, say, for example, polytheistic reconstructionist paganism. Is the, One of the reasons is, is because in Rome, for example, or in the Hellenistic world, people really didn't always get a lot from the state religion. They didn't mm-hmm. feel connected to it. Mm-hmm. It didn't promise them mm-hmm. anything. Like, it's just very true that you didn't get a lot of sweet promises about the afterlife, your loved ones, your meaning in life. If your, your loved life is. was horrible, you might go Boring. sacrifice at the Temple of Aphrodite. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of During it. During a festival. Right. Mm-hmm. It was very state-controlled. Hope she notices. You had the College of Pontifices. <laughs> You had the College of Pontifices in Rome. You had the established priesthood in Thebes, in Egypt. You had, um, you know, Greek city-states that had their own issues. But in the mystery cults, you were really allowed to be a believer. Like, their prayers read differently. Like, if you read prayers that we have from Roman senators in the state cult, they're very based on this concept of what we call in religious studies in Rome, do et des. I give and you give. I sacrifice this bull to you, O great Minerva, that we may win in this war against Carthage. And that's it. 
Well, one That's of the it. reason why people <laughs> might want to wonder sometimes, I think a lot of people think because we're Alexandrians, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, oh, they work with the Egyptian gods because they're Alexandrians. Mm -hmm. The reason why Levi and I and Ellie discuss the mystery cults so much and we're so passionate about them is because that was the last sect of influential pre-Christian religion in Europe before Christianity. You know, the Druids were way gone already. I'm not saying there's no fragments of what we call yeah. Druids in Europe, but people have this weird delusion like the Druids were doing their thing in Britain and then Christianity came and stomped them over. It had faded long before Christianity um, because it, there was cycles of other pre-Christian peoples that yes. were coming in. You know, Britain was no... Britain, outside of very rural places, was no longer Celtic by the time it was Christianized. There were Celtic fringes, just like there are today, of Celtic culture. And we were going to discuss that. Yeah. Um, I think that the reason why witchcraft is so associated with the Celts is because of World War II. So people like um, Jarl Gardner were people who experienced World War II, mm -hmm. and they wanted nothing to do with anything Germanic. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the Saxons mm -hmm. and the Vikings were off the table. So Britain was Celtic. Yeah, no, you know? no, no, yes. no um, And for some reason, and Brit the British do this today, and I don't know why, Doreen didn't, but a lot of British do this today where they also want nothing to do with the Romans. I think that's because their obsession with the Celtic culture, that the Romans came. And, but the truth of it is British culture is more Roman than it is Celtic. I hate to break that to anyone, but it is. And in fact, I think witchcraft, how it functions, is more Roman than it is Celtic. However, based on what we know, because as we've yes. all said, there's lots we don't know. Mm -hmm. However, yes, there are Cel strong Celtic influences within modern witchcraft because that was something that Gerald Gardner was interested in, and it's in the land. But it was also a Roman land, so it's in the land too. I think there is a really yeah. strong reason for that. Yeah. Um, when, when people started looking for alternative spiritual practices and they looked to the past, they did have the classics, so the Odyssey, that the Iliad. Yeah, yeah. What they did not have, though, are the beautiful translations we now have of certain Neoplatonic texts and the deeper Egyptian texts and all yeah, that. The Hermetica. The Hermetica. No. It existed. It was very hard to get. It was very rare. Do you know what they did have, though? The Arthurian mythos. Bees. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. they, and they had romanticism. They yeah. have beads. They, uh, but yes, but I think, uh, but they have poetry. Most of modern yes. druidry yes. is based on romanticism. Yeah, exactly, they yeah. had romanticism. They had fairy tales. The they legends. had the Arthurian, you know, cycle from France because it really actually comes yes. from France more yes. than England. Um, you know, they they have all of that, and so that's what you go to because you can't go back because the Iliad and the Odyssey are beautiful, but they're not super religious. But the fairy tales and the Arthurian cycles are. They're deeply spiritual. So that's what you take, because that's what you have. And it's, yeah, the stories. We do have lots of Celtic stuff that witches are fond of, and I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing on any of this stuff. It just happens to be a reality. We don't know much about Celtic religion. 90% of what you see published as fact on the internet is, like, based on romanticism. It really yeah. is. When you is know? Lord of the Rings and all? The 30s, 40s, between World War One and Two, or when? Um, the Inklings and everything. When are the Inklings? If somebody in the comments says the Inklings, 30s. I'm pretty sure it's post but, World War Two. I okay. know I lose nerd but points. But there's still for that period between World War One and World War Two. The II Hobbit would like be the first where one, where they right? did a ton of like research on themselves. Yes, and it's and all, you know, Celtic, like so many things came Celtic up. Celtic romanticism, were, right? Right. You know, they they really did and for love good it. reason. They really were digging back in. And Ellie talks and about this. Started a trend. You, you know, Scandinavia did it. Germany. I'm not. I'm not as outdoorsy. I wish I was sometimes, honestly. I just want to give a shout out. I just finished Byron Ballard, and she's, you know, she's a friend of the of mm -hmm. Hex Fest and mm -hmm. things. I just finished her 2018 book, Earthworks, and it is so good, guys. It is this beautiful, it's very feminist and very earthy. It is just this beautiful, like, belief in, like, going to ground and finding God in the earth and God, the goddess, you know, she's a goddess worshiper, the goddess in the earth. And like what that means to protect oneself in what she calls tower time, which is this destructive, you know, death of patriarchy and violence and whatnot, especially given the news cycle right now. Beautiful book, highly recommend. But um Which we carry at Hex. Yes, I might have bought the last copy, books. but we do. Um many of her but, um, books. But her point is 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 I think sometimes I'm you know, I was thinking about this for the show. I think that is also why we go to the Celts sometimes. There is a softer beauty to it. And you could, if you were in England, like Gerald and Dorian, you could go to those places. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go to Eleusis easily no. if no. you're in England, but you can go to the Stones. Right. It's right there. I think that it definitely is influencing things. It's in the land and, and all mm -hmm. that. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that it's 
not a, that there's not a connection. The thing we need to realize as well is, and I hate to say European, 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 because I think that there are bigger things in a sense, but, you know, because nothing, nothing new under the sun, as we talked earlier, everyone came out of the same place. No matter where they were, there was a sun, there was a moon, there were stars, there were seasons, there were animals, seasons, there were men and there were women. Yes. Like all of these things were happening. People lived in the diet. So we're all having the same experiences in the same environments, more or less, depending on where you lived. But the Celts and the Romans were literally related, like pretty closely in the scheme of human evolution. Yeah. So they just came in waves that were separated. Yes, by they time. were both migrating into Europeans. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was Levi yes. and I that were talking, and we were, and it was somebody that else said it that inspired me. But we were talking, and it was discussing how that the rites of the Romans were like sophisticated versions of what the Druids, what they were saying the Druids did. You know, the Romans would literally, it might be a high end senator of a, of a very noble family, would wear his white hood mm -hmm. and sacrifice an animal at the temple. Yep. Meanwhile, they're accusing the Druids of wearing white and sacrificing animals. It's so the there was thing, this yeah. sort of this idea that the Druids, the people they were calling Druids mm -hmm. in Gaul, mm -hmm. were a barbaric version of themselves. And that's why they were sort of mm -hmm. freaked out by it. Um, but they were literally related. If you're, you know, yeah. the idea that, you know, ooh, you know, Diana wasn't originally worshipped in Britain. She was brought there by the Romans. So she's not really a British goddess. She was there for at least 500 years. That's a long time. And I'm pretty sure she's probably related to the Welsh Dawn. I'm pretty sure they come from the same place. I'm not saying they don't have a cultural split somewhere. That's, but You bring up a brilliant yeah. point, which is when people want to play this game of who's got the oldest... Where are you going to stop? Yeah. Because you can. Don wasn't originally there older. either. They migrated. The Celts migrated to Britain too. There were people living in Britain before and look the Celts. How old, look how old yeah. Judaism and Zoroastrianism yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Why not pick them? Yeah. Hinduism is incredibly mm -hmm. old. You know why not? Pick well, that's them? the Don't oldest pre-Christian religion we have on Earth that's been continuing. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as I know. Why yeah. not pick that? Yeah. If we're just going to play this game of who's older, you know, and why does that matter? Well, and you guys have disagreement agreed with me about like genetic things. I think that we are coming into each other. Because we're all related, that's With why. certain yeah. qualities and consistencies. The reason why, to put it very... tendency to pick a certain mythology. The reason why I, I challenge that sometimes, Elias, is because the people who propagated that idea were generally connected to extremely racist movements. I, I, I believe you. And, you and know, I, it kind of goes into Nazi Germany and that sort of thing. Yep. That's literally what Hitler believed. I don't believe it. I believe in... I believe in human instincts and stuff in your DNA because mm -hmm. that's science really. Yes, but I don't believe in genetic. Uh, I believe in genetic memory, but I think that, you know, I know for a fact I'm related to Romans. And I know that because there are bodies that they have discovered where their DNA and my DNA match. They don't have bodies of everyone. They have bodies of certain dead people. And some bodies have been given DNA testing, and if you're a part of any of these DNA things, if they happen to dig up a body or get access to a body's DNA that you're related to, they can literally say you're related to this person. However, I have 1% Italian DNA, so it's just a luck chance that this body exists. Yeah. But I'm, I was related to a Roman. doesn't mean that that's you know, the thing. DNA and who you're related to is also different. You know, my brother may not have that DNA. Right. You know, so that's a pseudoscience, and I, I just, I don't know. I believe more in the reincarnation idea. Right. I believe in the human idea that maybe, here's where I'll give you the bone, is maybe your DNA, like your personal DNA, mm -hmm. maybe it, it, and I know Levi won't connect with this, but I, well, you speak for yourself. <laughs> Let's say there was a magical-minded person in your DNA somehow that that's speaking to you. Mm -hmm. That I could jive mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's literally in your blood. Yeah, I don't mean it like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expressing myself correctly. And Levi has said <clears throat> culture outweighs that. Like if you're brought into a certain sure. intellectual circumstances, you're going to have those kinds of choices in terms of... Yep. I'm talking about what God forms you pick, really. And, yeah. I, and I agree with that for the most part. I think that it's it's culture is going to determine. But I will agree about. with you but, in one area. Let me I'll let you finish first. Well, just somehow, and I, I think you're catching on it a little bit better than that. I can say it because of who I'm coming from, distantly 
and today. You feel connected to. I might. I'm wondering, would I be sort of influenced to choose things that were part Maybe. of those we people? We don't know. Okay. Those people. And why, I don't know. And I, I don't actually wanna, I don't am going to be a geneticist. That's not really. I'm going to seed some ground that I almost never do. Because I'm usually very. If you ever watch Kevin Lemur, if you've ever seen me teach in Texas, I am very rigid anti this. I'm like really aggressive when I talk about how I don't believe in genetic. Like, just well, I'm not really on the ancestor the, bandwagon. Well, yeah. and I see the, and I'm <laughs> so not the, the, I am not on the ancestor bandwagon. But don't get me wrong about that. I will and say I this. See it's a very sensitive For a topic. long time now, for a long time now, I have had a deep love for certain schools of Hindu philosophy, like a deep love. Um, particularly what's the called. The phones cannot be working. What, they are. What's called. Have any phone calls? Not yet. Oh. Come what's on, called, people. 309 goddess. Come on. Love, middle of a point. <laughs> what's called Shakti Hinduism, deeply important to me. Kali worship. I taught a class on Kali at Hex last year, at Hex Fest last year. Um, and I love it. But I do agree with you on one thing. It is sometimes there is this weird blockage where it's like no matter how well versed or how educated I am in that philosophy, and I think I'm smarter than the average bear in that, but it's still not mine. You know what I mean? Like, whereas if I look at the Celtic gods or I look at the gods of, of yeah. you know, the Roman world, I am so much more comfortable in that sy symbol system. So I do agree with you on some point. There is such a thing as cultural memory. And the and other end of that argument that's that's also just what is appropriation, it's, how we're really on guard about not appropriating. That's the other I'm end I'm not of on that. guard about that. I, I, well, I know, but I that's the other that's end the of that discussion. I think that's the thing in the world in religion. I know, I know, yeah. but people today are on the appropriation. Well, well people today the are side on the like, bandwagon of why everything. We, one of the reasons why we can't appropriate or take something that isn't part of whatever we... It doesn't always work for you as part of the problem. I don't agree with that. Um, I think that's a, a subject for something else. So I don't think religion, here's the thing. Traditionally speaking, it's a very, very, very modern concept to identify any religious system with race. Even if you go into tribal societies, there are, is historically documented cases of Native Americans adopting Caucasians into the tribe. And when you were in the tribe, everything about the tribe was accessible to you. Mm -hmm. Religion, yeah, language, yeah, spirituality. Yeah, yeah. The modern, it's an extremely modern idea. Race itself is a modern it concept. Is. The way it's an extremely it modern is. idea and has no place in witchcraft. So I, I'm not even comfortable with saying cultural appropriation in terms of religion. I believe in cultural appropriation in terms of let's not rip off that Mexican lady's blanket business. You know, and, and sell steal it, her yeah. art and, and sell it, yes. it in a mass right, uh, corporation, right. which is happening all over the place. So totally different topic. But um, to bring it back on topic, we've talked a lot about what is old mystery cults. What's new? So like we've talked, you know, this is the in a way religion. nothing. <laughs> you know, but what is so many more up, but really old. in contemporary witchcraft practice? What is something that you're comfortable saying is something that we have developed? Well, calling, calling, using the word witchcraft is modern. Yep. It, yeah. It's part of the okay. modern world. The English language is modern. And I know, and I, I mean modern in comparison to the pre-Christian ideas we're talking about. Yeah. You're talking about a concept of a goddess in comparison to uh, the English language. You know, Cleopatra preceded the English language. Let's just think about that in terms. At least pretty close, right? I think she preceded it. So the reality what is we now call English. Yes, yeah, we're 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 really not uh, the vocabulary we're using. Obviously, witchcraft was put forward in the modern world as a religion, but the word witchcraft may or may not have been a religion. We don't really know because we don't really know what the witch or witche were. You know, there's no evidence of them being a religion, but we have very little evidence of Germanic religions. We have we know about as much about Germanic religions as we do about the Druids. And it's, it's all like, late Christian yes, writing. Yes, because they didn't it write it down. So we really don't know. Yeah. And then we're talking about the Germanic people who were living in what we now call Britain for a while. Mm -hmm. So they become a distinct culture anyway. So mm -hmm. God knows mm -hmm. what they were, were doing. So they may have been priests and priestesses, but we don't know one way or the other. So that's new, witchcraft, the mm -hmm. word witchcraft, witchcraft being a religious movement. Or witchcraft being a positive word. Yeah. Uh, or, really? or it being a positive word. And that may not yeah. even really be true most some of the yeah. time. Right? We don't know. Yeah. I had a great idea. Polyester robe is new. <laughs> a polyester robes, that's new in witchcraft. I mean, I'm really looking at us thinking, what can we, okay. We don't do that, do Eyeglasses, um, modern eyeglasses are, no, are new I, in ritual. I mean polyester. something, we uh, did, I will say this, witchcraft did inherit 
but through Gerald and through Doreen and through the Sanders and through other people, we did inherit small parts of the Theosophical Society. Yes. Um, certain ways of uh, well, that visualization. Would be a whole world in general. Yeah. Certain ways yes, of visualization true. techniques. And but what those things, things like may that. have been older than the Theostic Society. Yes, yeah. but not by much. This a lot of the concepts that come from the New Thought movement can really no they go come from the East. Like you don't. They don't though. The stuff is uh, not some Tibetan. No, I think I think so, I think a lot of it is new. I think a lot of it is, it is, is new. new thought, but, but that scholars, doesn't make it bad. No, but the scholars I think have studied her to bed. It's not make it bad. So they thought okay, it was so other better. things, uh, keeping it to just witchcraft. What would be some other things? Um, well, I suppose some of our some of our accoutrements, without naming them, they're mm-hmm. probably new. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. um, they may have other occult sources. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, the Book of Shadows being called that is new. It's a yeah. new thing. Yeah. Um, some of our religious beliefs are probably new. You know, I can't say that the uh, old English witches knew what Anit Har Nun Do It Ye Will means. Yeah, Correct. Uh, doesn't mean that religions didn't have ethics that were similar. They probably did. Well, anything um, Crowleyite is going to be new, right? Well, they had, then some of that came from older OTO, sources. Yeah. So, yeah. what is that poem that they think? I can never remember the French book that that came from. Oh, I, it comes from Gargantua and Pantagruel by Robert. Now, do you think Crowley's source was the same, or do you think? Yes. You, okay, so both yes. It's um, also old. It's been it's been used in literature a lot. So it could have been older than it do is. Do what you will yeah. should be the whole of the wall. That's yeah. old. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, there are definitely things, and the way the way they're woven together, I think, is probably new. I mean. Most, I think, I think that what's not new is the delusion, you know, and I think that's one of the things that we suffer from in the modern age is, you know, the people who I think were initiates of the cult of ISIS were, I don't think they were sitting there going, well, we're not really doing this like they did in ancient Egypt. I don't think that was a thought process. Correct. I think they were just like, this is so ancient. This is ancient. the real ancient this way. This is so ancient. So it's a modern concept to be like, dissecting yeah, these things right, right. and I think it's healthy to do that in one way but I also think it's sort of a magic killer on the other so I think you got to be careful with that I think sometimes you just got to realize that you know the magic is the results of the reason I believe in for instance the initiation and power of succession of certain groups like Gardnerian Alexandrian witchcraft like the Masons, like the OTO, like the Golden Dawn, is because those initiations have now been going on for a while, they've continued, they've propagated. Mm -hmm. Where we have other groups that went fizzled out. You know, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of covens in the world that have created their own tradition, they've named their own tradition, and they usually come and go just as quickly. Why aren't they propagating? You know, because they weren't meant to. The, the magic, the fertility is not there. Mm-hmm. So for me, that is where I see the power. It's the reason why I believe in that certain elements of Leland's work are authentic craft. Because the results of that work and how the world has responded to it and how it's continued to grow. You know, real magic thrives. It flows like water. So I think that's where you should really be paying attention to. You know, it's like... The debate about Pan. This isn't a current debate, really, but it's happened numerous times over the craft where people will go on, well, Pan wasn't really originally associated with witchcraft. You know, there's nothing in the past about him being magical. Uh, He wasn't in Britain. You know, all these sort of conversations of why witches were obsessed with Pan. What is Pan doing now interests me more than an intellectual jungle gym about what Pan used to be. You know, when I, I'm like, maybe Pan's on his comeback tour. You know, maybe we're learning, maybe we're learning something about Pan that we just didn't get recorded in history. I've learned some things about Pan. Yeah, we don't know that there weren't magical cults with a goddess to Pan at some point in time. Not everything was preserved. Yeah. Not yeah. all knowledge was preserved. So who knows? And you know, Hecate, yeah, she's also a really good example. You know, I think she's more popular now than she was in the ancient world. I probably, really do. I you know, like she's like probably number. worshipped yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. How many people you know? are on the so, earth? Yeah. And Hecate, yeah. Um, yeah. I also think it's important. Um, another thing that was a big reason, and this is something that we don't talk about as much. Ellie does, so maybe you have a stronger opinion on this. Ellie talks about this more than Brian or I do normally, but and the, we do love Ellie's opinions, everyone. Yes, yes. Just you know, 
not there her support of racism. Just one. <laughs> but just what I was going to say you. that you bring up a lot, though, is this connection to the earth. And that is something that wow. I think this concept of the old religion we do have to bring up, is that a lot of modern religions, and I'm including modern incarnations of Christianity, have just divorced themselves entirely from the natural world, right? The earth doesn't matter. Our natural bodies don't matter. We pretend death doesn't exist. We don't touch something trees. We, we don't care about the environment. We don't grow our own food. We don't know where our food comes from. We've never seen an animal be slaughtered. I think the old religion, a lot of that was a reconnection to we are biological beings on a bio, in a biosphere, right? And you talk about that a lot, and I think that's an important part of the Ellie also lives it. <coughs> well, yeah. you know, I do, but I also, think, I also think on the earth up until you know, 200 years ago with the Industrial Revolution, <clears throat> you know, fuel and, and engines and electricity, there just wasn't much else but the earth. Yeah. I mean, you know, you had... And it was divine. And you had the moon and some stars. You had a, a oil lamp. You had certain amount of hours to get certain amount of work done with very little resources. I mean, imagine making a dress out of flax. It's a lot of work. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, come on, guys. So, so you can't lot, really give that much credit to them. No. Lady Gaga made one out of bacon. I know, I know. But a lot, a lot happened. A lot happened to humans in a very quick succession, away from our natural way for thousands and thousands yes. of years, and very quickly changed our whole experience. With now we're sitting inside buildings with air conditioning, the internet. We're talking to each to you on your laptop or your phone, and we're you know having food delivered by Uber Eats. I mean, do you think that this, this is life. a big this is a big change? So I just try to bring us back in terms of our thinking. To just two or three hundred years ago, and try to at least get your mind. Yeah, the old witches there. would have grown their own mm -hmm. wine mm -hmm. and their yeah. feet it all did in make it. a huge yeah. resurgence in crafts, though, and that's interesting about it the did. old religion. The old religion, weaving, knitting, pulled in so many crafters in paganism too. Did it? So now many we're gonna, leather we're workers. Make our own jam. Most of them aren't really good, though. We're going to go to Walmart and mm -hmm. get supplies so Do we you can make our that? own jam. I Do you mean, believe that witchcraft and paganism and the goddess movement and has something important spiritually in the future to, for environmentalism, that that's the, one of the reasons it's awakening? I don't know. I, I think so. it has a belief in... I hope so, but I don't. I think it can. I think it has the potential to impact human consciousness. To make the earth sacred again? I think it's one of the ways in which human consciousness can, can become aware of those things. I don't think it can do it on its own. You know, but then again, magic is very powerful. So I think I think what that do you think? can't do it on its own. Earth I think that there's more than one um, spiritual movement on the planet that can go that way. You know, because I don't think witchcraft. I don't think witchcraft is ever going to become a dominant enough religion on you earth see. for itself to do that. However, just by changing human consciousness and, for instance, you know, the modern pagan movement. It was influenced and heavily by witchcraft. However, now it's going the other direction. The modern pagan movement is increasingly becoming patriarchal. So you know, it's all about and Odin and yeah. all that sort of thing. Electronic. So you know, there the the polytheistic movement is going to be misogynistic because there is no historical uh, polytheistic movement that is matriarchal. So it's um, it is the way it is. We've got kind of the mythos that. You know, Don might be the head of the, the Welsh house, but there's no actual agrigor around that. Whereas if you're into Hellenism, it's if you're Zeus. into Kemetic Egyptian wow. stuff, if you're into any of those things, Odinism, Asatru, those are all male-dominated religions that just happen to have a lot of goddesses. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, mm -hmm. they may offer mm -hmm. something. There's like female saints. You basically still have father god and female saints. Yeah. So I don't think that that's the direction that's heading in, but we do have uh, the goddess in Hindu culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have the goddess in Kuan Yin, who is one of the most um, worshipped deities on the planet, um, as far in terms of followers. Um, technically not a deity, but she's a deity. She's a goddess, right? We all know this. Um, and then witchcraft is, is a seed in the West. So I think goddess consciousness is extremely important, and... I think that has to be embraced by women for that to actually flourish. Yes. And unfortunately, women aren't really embracing it. It is true. The goddess movement has become... I actually am tempted to... You know, I've been talking about writing a book, you know, a little bit about this concept, is 
There has been a weird trend, and I think this still is on topic because it is about the old religion versus the new, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Brian's very right. There is this weird backlash that has happened in contemporary magical communities against the goddess movement. I think of the we 70s. discovered that together. We did. Doing this show. Through the 60s and 70s, the goddess movement reigned supreme. Mm-hmm. You had Starhawk, mm-hmm. you had Susanna Budapest, mm-hmm. you had a lot of people who were saying, no, this is about the goddess. This is about Mother Earth. We are returning to Mother Earth. And there has just been this hateful backlash. If you even mention stuff like that now, you get an eye roll, mm-hmm. you get told, no, 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 I'm a Satru, I read the Hobbamal, I'm, it's Odin IV. Ancestors, ancestors. And my ancestors, which were all <laughs> patriarchs, you know. And it's just this weird anti-goddess mm-hmm. it's sentiment because they I think, think it's, it's weird. Witches heart. aren't worshipping dead people. Witches don't worship dead people, number one. Witches do not, I'm not saying the dead don't exist, clearly they do. Yes. Witches don't worship dead people. Witches are not just a religion of the devil, and witches are not polytheists that worship Zeus and all these little goddesses. Yeah. You know, we are a goddess oriented cult, you know. Yes. Um, if it had been more Gardnerian and Alexandrian witches thriving, I think, in the 70s and 80s, it was a lot of women only groups that were attached to that goddess. Uh, Propagation. Well, that happened and in they, America. They kind of, yeah. It happened in America. I think they kind of spun off to be very pro woman but anti male. Well, that's I what ruined it. Didn't work, it. it didn't work for that that's reason. What it. The environmentalists kind of. That's where the pushback happened, I think. created their own ways, and then we got left with this hollow middle. What the misogynistic movement with. did, the misogynistic movement, what they did is they took that um, focus of all goddess groups, all women groups, and they painted that onto anyone in Wicca. Right, right, yeah. right. And so and Wicca her, became a... You had to be a fat lesbian mm-hmm. on a beach with mm-hmm. a stick. Mm-hmm. And when that narrative got put out to the general public mm-hmm. for over a decade, most men were not interested in joining so they, you know, started becoming uh, magicians or Odinists yes. or whatever, and that that chasm went by. I think what also happened is that the priesthood of the goddess, Gardnerians and Alexandrians, went through a lull of being quiet, meaning we weren't publishing any books, we weren't mm-hmm. doing shows like this, we weren't a voice outside of AOL, which really, you know, was mm-hmm. just us fighting with each other, just really. Just all over here um, in our circles doing the work. So people forgot about the narrative of the uh, priesthood, mm-hmm. the initiatory mm-hmm. priesthood mm-hmm. of witchcraft, and everyone else took it over. We're swinging again to where I think there is... I meet people who are genuinely interested in the goddess, but I think it's important to sort of make that distinction because I... I hear Gardnerians, uh, particularly in America, all the time, the same ones who love the word Wicca, who want to emphasize that they're polytheists. And I, I think that they're working in a system where they're influenced more by the books that they have read by non-initiates than they are by the Book of Shadows or the actual literature or practices of an history. Yes. And unfortunately, some of them are voices. And I realize that why we might try to speak in the languages of other people. But I think it's important sometimes to say, you know, it's okay to believe in the goddess of the entire universe. I do. You don't have to. But I do. I, I kind of want to even double down a little bit more. Something is happening in the comments that I knew would happen. Like clockwork. Ooh, I can't see the comments. Which is, you know, Craig says, disagree. You know, the craft honors the feminine and the masculine. We never said it didn't, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But immediately you feel this bizarre need to defend the male. Mm-hmm. Francis, for example, you know, look, Francis, so glad you're commenting. I agree when the horned goddess is brought in and understood properly, it very much can tie you to the earth and the wheel of the year is about the god in many ways. However, big however, why is this always the reaction when we start talking about the goddess? Is just, we just, we cannot hurt the poor god's feeling. What poor god? 98% of the world's homicides are done by men. The vast majority of the world's leaders are men. The vast majority, if not almost an entirety, of the world's religious leaders are men. Like, our government is almost entirely male. The world's major governments are almost entirely male. Who are you defending? Uh, somebody said there's lots of echoing. I don't know. Yeah. Why. Maybe we're just being loud. I don't know. Yeah, I'm being really loud. But it's just like... What is this desperate need to constantly be like, well, yeah, men too, men too. Yeah, honey, men have been in charge for a long time. Uh, like, in Alexandrian craft, in Gardnerian craft, you know, we, we do believe in balance. 
However, I don't feel the need to discuss my God publicly because there's enough D in the world. There's so um, much God I just, energy. I don't need to, so, and I don't think he minds. <laughs> there's so much God energy in the world. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to use, if I, I have a very tiny pocket. I don't think the answer to any like, imbalance is imbalance. I believe balance is the answer to everything, true equality. Do you but guys it's just not earth something with feminine, either. though? I do. Generally yeah, speaking, feminine. not I always. Is receptacle. You know, I tend to think of the earth as a core, as feminine, but sometimes I think of the manifestations of the earth being masculine, which mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it just depends. I mean, if you mean earth by nature, then I can see the god in nature. Um, I meant the actual physical ball in well, space. Well, I mean, dirt, I think, I think of as feminine. more female yeah. most of the time. But, you know, if I'm thinking about Geb and Nuit, then it doesn't matter because that's a different like scenario. It's a different but in witchcraft, generally speaking, the earth itself was considered yeah. feminine. Um, but just that, but place just, names, that's a Celtic thing, really. Yeah. But the land was usually mm-hmm. named after a female mm-hmm. entity. I don't um, mind that we keep focusing on the goddess. I kind of yeah. agree. It's, it's our own personal I, thing. I, I, you want, know. I want to um, also because I think it needs to be done. But you so. are right. You know, I don't want to call any spades out, but I thought... Um, and we all have plenty you know, of God experiences. So we do. much. We do. You know. So much. It's not that we don't. One more thing I wanted to say here. We're um, basically... We have our own God. Separate yes. from the I love the God, don't get me are, wrong. That are going on right now. When we were talking about ancient cults, we can imagine how they felt when you participated in them. And even though we dissect and discuss academically our religions today, maybe over overly so, when we're actually working together in our rituals, in our circle, in our temple, the I think some of the oldest experiences possible for humans come into our bodies and into our experience and they are the same as the old religion experiences. I believe that's Yeah, I don't think that's changed. changed. After being yeah. in them. You yeah. know, you can look at them from the outside, you can talk about well, them. Well, that's where the mystery is. But that's the mystery. mystery. And that, that, I think, hasn't changed in Absolutely. thousands of years. That core experience, the feeling, the ecstasy, the otherworldliness, and the union with the divine. No, I definitely believe that. Yeah. You know, because I, I think about that sometimes when I but think to Levi's about, point about um, Eleusis, it's similar. You, you do. Mm-hmm. It's it is generally men who have you know. What about this? What about that? You know, there's a bit of insecurity that comes out with that, and I think that um, well, I think it's being afraid of losing your power. You know, I think that happens to a lot of people. You know, empowering the goddess, worshiping the goddess, doesn't take away from a man. It makes him whole. You know, that's what I think. Something you once said to me that has stuck with me my entire journey in craft is that God in the Western world is diseased because there is no woman. Like, you know, you said that to me once, and I, I believe it wholeheartedly. I think any organization, name me an organization, try your best, I promise you won't, in the history of the Western world that was all male that is not rife with violence and cruelty. And, That's the entire West and, still, really. You know, and people always say women's groups do that too. Here's a fun fact. No, they don't. That's a false equivocation. It is an absolute false equivocation. There is not as much violence committed by women in the world than there is men. It's not, and not by a small margin, by like 98 to 2. So like, it's a lie. And I'm tired of pretending that I have to sit back when people say, well, it's just the same if we just worshiped a goddess and it was all ladies. Nope, <laughs> you're wrong. You're just dead wrong. It's literally not true. Well, you female, know. well, like, you know, uh, <laughs> we, we literally do have a chemical running through us, testosterone, which makes us more violent and aggressive. You know, it's, it's, it's a scientific fact you know, that men are naturally more aggressive than women. But Ellie, do you not feel like... I mean, a, except for Ellie. She, Ellie, could, Ellie could take <laughs> us all out if she wanted to. <laughs> But she's Ellie, not aggressive. She's you know, just it's rude. It's two gay men here preaching the <laughs> goddess's words when you're right here. But like, I can hold my own. <laughs> do you feel that, though? Do you feel like that, that we need to be priests of the goddess and priestess of the goddess? Do you feel that world? men uh, outside of witchcraft that you've experienced in these sorts of things, do you feel like they... Well, I think they have made women dirty, I think in a real basic way. You know, all my life bringing up, bringing up, and even reading for the last few thousand years, writing, it, it's derogatory to women. Yeah, just all over. I personally was raised in a really, you know, educated, equal household. My mother worked and made as much money as my father. And at, to, in my age, they exhibited equal powers and equal levels of success. But I certainly saw around me up to and including the divorce. That's right. That wasn't <laughs> my mother. One actually in all the ways, but <clears throat> um, 
she did. Um, yeah, it's just so common. You don't, you can't really see it. It's just prevalent. It's everywhere that men are better and women are the second sex, right? Yeah. Isn't that what Simone de Beauvoir wrote? Yeah, the, the second sex. sex. The second sex. So I think it's probably really true, and I think that the earth as female has really gotten the bad end of the stick with that too. And I think really it's man, men, who have said, well, let's just rape and pillage all the resources out of this thing because it's not real, and we don't, we can do something else later. Cut all the trees and get all the sea And I have to confess something, because I see in the comments people are getting very irritated with me. I understand, Craig, that this is not the position you're taking, but what I'm saying is, is this is a position a lot of people do take. Um, and so I, I am kind of extrapolating, because I have had this experience. I travel in these circles. The new Ossetru male-only screw the goddess movement movement is a thing. It is a thing. Well, within what people like to call paganism now, yeah, and even a witchcraft, the trends, there's three trends that are going on right now. Um, polytheism with male-dominated gods, where it's a polytheistic yep. thing based on whatever you've chosen to do, and the head of that group is a god. Um, the devil, with no goddess, just the devil, yep. and um, ancestors... Those are the three things that people are, are going... Those are the trends. I know the trends. I run an occult empire uh, with my husband. So I know what the trends are. We those know are what the books trends. are selling. Um, it's the trend right now is not the goddess. You know, and me and Levi sort of extrapolated that this is something that's been going on for a while. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't believe in the goddess, truly you're not a witch. And I, I think that... I'm happy to say that too, and I'm happy to sort of argue about this because I don't understand why it ruffles so many feathers for any other reason. And I think it's because we have said, go back and watch Covington. We have all said, when Ellie was on the show, before Ellie was on the show, we have all said multiple times that Alexandrians believe in a god and a goddess, that there is an equality between them, that there is a beautiful synergy between the two of them. We have said this till we're blue in the face. Mm -hmm. It is in published works about mm -hmm. our religion. You know, it is everywhere, right? We've all We said can't that. do it without both. We can't and yet, even have a circle. Even, even after saying that, nobody can handle when we say things like the god the goddess. Well, what about the God? Look around. Like the the majority of the world's religions worship a male image. The vast majority of people on this earth who are religious worship a man. Like you know, it just seems like Though, such... Though, here's the little... I don't know if this is still true, because this was a statistic I got probably 15 years ago. And I keep quoting it all this time later. Um, at one point in time, during a religious census of the world, for whatever that's worth, Quan Yin was the most worshipped entity on the planet. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, um, she's yeah. extremely popular. With well, there's also a lot of Chinese people. She is also... <laughs> subservient to the Buddha. Yes, sure. Uh, well, I think some of them see her as the Buddha. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, she's a bodhisattva. Like, even in Buddhism, you can't reach nirvana. She was also originally a man. And is, is still right? a man in Tibet. Is that, a, is that right, Levi? You well, can't go to nirvana unless you're in a male body the last time. There are some Buddhist schools that talk that, I mean, that's, that you have to be in a male form to achieve nirvana. Too. That's not all Buddhism. Well, it has its misogynistic things, too, Buddhism. But Buddhism also denies the flesh of everything. That's the part yes, of it I don't. Right, you know? right, I, know. I think it's different than no. other... They say it's suffering. Yes, um, but not all schools of Buddhism teach that. That is, that is particular conservative schools that do. So mm. fair, fair knowledge there. So we've, we've wandered a little because this is a, a pulpit of mine. Well, no, because so. it's, you know, is the idea of, you know, witchcraft and what we're doing with the goddess new or old? And in our mind, it's old. It wasn't called witchcraft. You know, we don't know what the old English witches were believing because there's no documentation of it. Um, we know what witches believed from the 1950s. But we know that there were mystery cults in Europe and in Britain that absolutely believed exactly the way that we do. You know, the cult of Isis was in Britain. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that there was a major temple of Diana in London and that some people even believe that London is named after that temple, something like Raya Dawn or something, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's a theory. You know, there's other theories about London being named after a god, so whatever. But um, we do know there was supposedly a temple to Diana there, and there's a myth of the city being founded in her name. So it's possible the Brutus done that whole thing. So all of that goes on to teach you that there were people who believed that there was this divine feminine 
you know, in all kinds of places in the world. So in that sense, they were just as passionate about it. Priests and priestesses are generally pretty passionate about their religion. I mean, look at what the Romans believed about the cult of the Great Mother. They were equally fascinated and horrified by it, by priests that were emasculated, by the tarabalium, by, you know, by the processionals and the, and the insane music and the orgiastic rituals and the, and the devotion. Shutting off their... Yeah, it was devotion. The Syriad goddess... I think example, I would have been a bit appalled by the cult of Magnum. Sure. <laughs> but the, um, the, the, like the Syrian goddess, Anything they would become with so... Anything with self They flag. flogged themselves, which... Mm-hmm. Yeah, read, you know, a little bit of a flag there, guys. They, the worshippers of the Syrian goddess would flog themselves until they bled to soak her statues in blood. And this is not Orthea. It's a different, different goddess. No, I'm, I'm curious about the Syrian thing because yeah. I've been reading tons of stuff devotion. over the last couple of years on the Roman mystery cults and this is the first time I re- recollect her being brought up, so I'm definitely going to have to read yeah. this book. And she's a, there's um, a lot of Syrian cults that came to Rome, too. Is example. this a new term for it? No. Like Syrian cult? Because I've heard of that goddess. But the Orontes, the Syrian cult, um, you know, Atargatis, um, there's lots of different names that they huh. gave her. She was often paired with a, with a Baal, you know, a, a version of Baal. Um, there was the Carthaginian goddess Tanit. Is this sort of different. connected to the... Um, that one temple of Artemis Diana that got really popular. The Temple of Ephesus? Yes. Mm, that's separate. That's its own Were goddess. they later on, though, somewhere a crossover? Probably. I'm getting this, this weird, like, I'm just a little unclear about that. Yeah. I'm uneducated on that particular cult, so I'm curious about Where it. Where yeah. in history do we have mm. goddess only centers? Do we have any? Well, it was Shanti like, Hinduism. Usually goddess only, but yeah, sometimes. Over any time period. Um, what about in the West? Well, in the West, you know, cults, we, they weren't goddess only particular. So, for instance, the cult of Isis had gods in it. She was just, it was, uh, she was the central figure, mm-hmm. right? Goddess-centric is the word yeah, I would use. Um, but still, Egypt, we wouldn't say at any point, was goddess only. No, because the, 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 here's, here's the problem with the, the other problem people make the mistake of. There was no such thing as Egyptian religion. There were many different cults in Egypt. Yes, yeah. So if you belonged to, if you were initiate at some point of the cult of Hathor, it may have been goddess-centric with Hathor. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you were in the cult of Ra, it was Ra, right? Yep. So um, same thing with Greece. And, you know, even though we had the state religions of Rome and Greece, there weren't people walking around being like, I know it was the state religion of Rome. No, it was that the was, local gods. <laughs> yes. But it was you, just, when, you know. when was it like in the 80s when they started unearthing, or they started writing about all the little figurines, and so then they said this well, is the, the Neolithic. And it was not, yeah. there was no writing, yeah. obviously, so we can't say what they thought. Well, they, they do were. think um, they the, kind of the island of Malta, of period, um, right? the island of Malta is mm-hmm. got the oldest uh, temple in the world, um, I believe. Well, now there's that one in Turkey. Found in the one yeah. in Turkey is But one of the oldest ones, and it's all goddess figures. I don't think there's any God stuff there um, that I remember. I haven't been. Um, so there are examples of it, but I think I don't think goddess religion really usually said men don't have any power. Uh, I don't think it functioned that way. No. Man was usually involved. It was just she was sort of the central keystone. But most of the time there was some sort of balance, you know. <laughs> I'm going to step in and say one thing, which is this is a, because a lot of people are asking questions like, was Sumeria matriarchal? No. Um, this is a very fraught debate because there, there were a lot of academics who argued that there was a matriarchal Neolithic culture. Yeah. Well, there's a theory you know, that may be outdated, and you're going to have to help me with because this. Because of the artifacts. Okay. Um, it's something to do with Sheba. That might have been a matriarchal 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 culture. culture. Here's the thing. The vast majority, I would say the vast majority of academics no longer believe in the the myth of matriarchy. Maybe the island of Lesbos. Yeah. (laughs) They don't don't believe in it anymore. Um, Or where Wonder Woman lived. It's kind of fallen away. It has fallen away. However, however, there Mm -hmm. are academic sources that do argue that the concept of male dominance was not inherent in a lot of Neolithic no. cultures. This concept that God had to be a man, the father of the household was was the most important, that those ideas are not necessarily inherent to the human race. They are things that developed over time in different cultures. So it's a very complicated discussion, but there's no, I will say the idea that there was a universal matriarchy or that there was a perfectly matriarchal culture in the Neolithic era is no longer considered. Yeah. That's there what were I thought. That's what I thought. cultures where women were valued 
You know, there were cultures where the fertility of the mother were valued. You know, that's the, that's what it is. I, yeah. I think what we call matriarchal culture now is referring to the idea that there was a, a spiritual center to that, not that it was a tribe right. of Amazonians. Right, right. This you is know. also something right. about the cult of Isis. It probably did happen, but I don't think it was a big deal. The cult of Isis was widely popular in its beginning in Rome with slaves. Greece first. And um, in Greece and Rome with slaves and the lower born. The aristocracy in the beginning did not like the cult of Isis. It was too prudish. It, this is just a fact, right? Um, and part of the reason was that women were given a lot of power. They could be Equal. initiated. So could slaves be fully, initiated? Fully, right? They could be a woman could be initiated. Women fully. and slaves being initiated in Rome right. was very unique. Yes, and mm. this is a dirty little secret. We're all classic scholars in the pagan world and witchcraft world nowadays, aren't we? We all think we know a lot about the classics, and we have this very rosy view of the classics. The Greeks and Romans were some of the most patriarchal, violent, slave-trading, misogynistic people in history. They just had goddesses. They were violent towards yeah. women, right? And the cult of Isis in Rome was a little different. I'm not saying it's perfect. I don't have rose glasses about it either. But you could be a woman. I do. You could be a woman and be initiated all the way through the cult. And that's pretty special. Or a slave, technically. Yeah, or a slave. Whether it happened or not. Slaves could be initiated into any of these mystery cults, actually, even Eleusis. I think that was one of the reasons she got equated with Deanna of Nimi as the whole slave thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's... A, what, but what's important about the cult of Isis, the reason I always bring it up, is because of the time period of when Christianity... Christianity existed while the cult of Isis existed. Yes. Like, they existed yeah. in the same time they period. They You know, so that's important when we're talking about goddess worship um, and the fall of what people say, the fall of paganism. So this was one of the last stands. This, this goddess that comes from Africa, that was worshipped from Africa all the way to Britain, she was one of the last stand pre-Christian religions. Yep. I think that left a lasting impact, and of course it impacted the church, because in church memory she existed. The Virgin Mary. Yeah. And in rural places where they just didn't get news of the facts. I can't believe we got cities. no phone calls. I promise it's all you sure it's I working. swear I can show it to I you. want to say this in my witchcraft practice for, for so many years now. I was always really attracted to those early carvings and art, and some of them were horned deity mm -hmm. images, and others were the, the, the voluptuous woman images. I really like going back into those forms of earth. They're often carved in stone or sticks, and they're very primitive. And I, I love like, those images. I like taking those images and just trying to go back astrally into those times and feel that when it was so raw and visceral and now it's so... The primeval brutal. mother. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing. I, I did always love it's what Doreen Valente would always say, you know, we live in interesting times, things like that. You know, now's the best time to be... You know, we romanticize the pre-Christian peoples and we romanticize our ancestors. They, for the most part, lived hard lives. Most people lived hard lives. They didn't have a lot of medicine, you know, they were not running around in some pagan paradise before the Christians came and ruined the world. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. to Levi's point. You know, there was, uh, there was more violence, there was more uh, change, there was you know, less yeah. enlightenment, less education, people had less opportunities. Just getting through the yeah. day. So we're, we are all of us in a, in a time where we're able to sit here and have a conversation about how we're not academic enough. You know, that wasn't on there. You know, you were very fortunate to be an academic back then. <laughs> yeah, that, it, was, it took a, quite a bit of uh, wealth and time and a lot of slaves that tilled your field for you so you could read books or scrolls. You know? So I want to bring up a, another idea about religion and the old religion is that humans, however, whether it was imposed on us or we created religion, and I tend to think we, we, it came together, the mind of God and the workings of man came together to build the religions we have in time, they have a meaning for us, which is very sacred and special. It takes our energy of our being into another place where we feel empowered and loved and taken care of and part of the one. And I think that's really matters. I have a it, question for Levi. It matters oh, to go God. forward with religion. He's smiling, so it, it can't be a good It one. matters to go forward with religion, even if you're a if you're a modern materialist like Levi. What's the word you use all the time? Secular materialist. Yeah, secular, a secular world. materialist. Levi loves sec you, the secular. World. I know, right? He just but there's still a lot of value. A secular atheists. Yeah. 
my thing. There's a lot of hedge fund religion. managers. I remember that from my interview. <laughs> yeah. What was your question, Brian? Yeah, what's your question? Okay. So do you, what do you think, and this is, so, it's sort of the old religion, because Druids use that term too, some of the Druids use it. It was on the Mist of Avalon, right? It was in, it was in the Mist of Avalon, right? So somebody recently said to me, and I'm not going to name names because I won't embarrass anyone, but they said that the Druids were overseeing Irish law from the form of the Brehum laws in the, in the 17th century. What do you think in about that? In the 17th century, yeah. when the British Isles were entirely top-to-bottom Christianized. Yes. Like, I mean fully Christianized. Yes. This is post-Protestant Reformation. <laughs> like, not only are they Christianized, but half of them are Protestant at this point, and Scotland's full of Presbyterians. <laughs> like, um, no. Um, no. That's what my brain did too, but I thought no. I'd double-check, because when I did... Um, is like I had to like check Sanity World, and I want. I said, like, most, what were they wearing? Did you say what were they wearing? At there were the no druids, and first of all, that wasn't even a word used yes, in Ireland. Right like, yeah, where did yeah. they go to work? It's not an attack on modern druidry. I have no problem with modern druidry as long as they realize that they're going off of you know what we know about the Celts did, and Celtic did culture. Did they start? Yeah. I mean, I know masonry started late sixteen hundred. They broke off. But when did like, I pointed start? that out. I said. Uh, I mean, modern Druidry. Modern Druidry came out of England from the Masonic movement yeah. as a cultural... Well, there was a Welsh section of it, yeah. but they were both cultural movements. And this is part of it, what I was going to say about the Celts and witchcraft earlier. There was literally a cultural movement going on after World War II with the Celts and, and England. You know, uh, Queen Elizabeth, our current queen right now, was actually given a bardic initiation in Wales. I doubt this believes... I, well, we are. A I, know, I just colony. love that you say it. That way. <laughs> Brian is such an Anglophile. Our queen. She's You're from queen. Spokane, Washington. <laughs> she is not your queen. She was. <laughs> I didn't rebel against her I just because everyone family. else did. She I is not your queen. Family. I want her to be my queen. My though. DNA says otherwise. <laughs> Me too. Um, I just love that. Our queen. <laughs> Our queen. Uh, in any case, you know, she. well, she's the closest we have, right? So, you know, basically, she was a part of that. So, that, there was a movement going on there. So yes, the Masons were involved. What they actually believed and thought, I don't know, but you know, they there was a they were very heavily influenced by uh, the occultism of the time, uh, Masonry and Romanticism, right? Poetry, lots um, of poetry. Well, what's happened since then is now there's different Druid groups that are more focused on Celtic poetry and things like that that we have. And, but it really is driven by very little history and mostly fantasy. You know, not Celtic culture did survive, though. So, you know, embracing the music and the poetry we have and the idea that that's important, that's all very real. Celtic 100%. culture did survive. Um, but Celtic culture and the idea of... I mean, mo yeah. anthropologists and archaeologists have never discovered a single body they could identify as a Druid. You know, our thoughts about this in the modern world now are very different. And I have evolved my own, which are just theories. I think the Druids were obviously religious leaders of, of Celtic society in Gaul and maybe in Anglesey, and maybe the two were connected, or maybe the Romans couldn't decide the difference. Between you know? what a priest and what country yes, was, and um, a priest and another. But I think that there were... I think we can look at all of the cultures that we know of, like the Greeks and the Romans, who are related to the Celts, and we can look at them and say they probably functioned in some way similar. You know, maybe not exactly, but more than likely, since we can look at the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, and other cultures, and see that the idea of that time was that there was a culture, they may have had their more important gods in the culture, but they had separate cults functioning within those cultures. I think the Celts were probably that way, and I think there were probably regional gods as well, um, tribal gods. Mm -hmm. So I think there's probably more than one cult. Um, there wasn't one Druidic cult any more than there's one witch cult of Europe, yeah. right? So that's my theory. But the point of it is, is I'm not poo-pooing on it. You go. You know, if you're going to be a Celtic Reconstructionist, why not be a Druid? You know? And if you get a group that's... I think the modern Druid movement has a lot of very positive mm -hmm. things to offer. And I think um, there's, a lot, there's a lot you can do. I mean, seriously, there is a lot you can study and do there. But, you know... I don't think we should be delusional. And I went looking at all these Druid groups, and they were all delusional. It was all Arthurian I know. romanticism, yeah. and it was being stated as fact. You know, and that's why I meet people in these talks that you should meet a real Druid. 
You know? What does that mean? Yeah, what do you think like, it means? You know, but you know, then again, here I am saying I'm a witch. So you know, it's like, but I think the truth of the matter is that the history is. Um, Gerald Gardner was a druid. Most people don't know that. He was an initiate of the ancient order of druids. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how involved he was, but he was a member of it. And he was friends with Ross Nich Nicholas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Francis is literally talking about this in the comments. Oh, <laughs> you're saying, like, talking about their relationship. It's very well known in the craft yes. history. Uh, well, the one thing we do have in common is they ate sabbats, and there's a mythos about where they came from. Was it from uh, the druids to the witches, the witches to the druids? Yeah. Um, so don't, and we don't really have that answer. There's lots of theories, but. Um, I do know that Gerald Gardner originally only did the Great Sabbaths, and it was the Bricket Wood Coven who added the solstice and the equinoxes. That's what I am under the impression of, anyway. Um, so, old religion. <laughs> I'm just going to start saying it for everything. Yeah. I'll say this: I know a tiny handful of people who are part of the Order of Bards, Ovates, oh, and, and Druids. Yes, it's been going on for a while. <laughs> they, the ones I know, have seemed very serious about their academic research and not part of the fantasy of Arthurian legend, but like the poetry and the kind of the philosophic style. And well, I think there were I, two, I found them to be two legitimate. real like movements. There was really the people. English one, but there was a Welsh movement that was very cultural, mm -hmm. and they were very. I can't think they have a festival that starts with a G or something like that. Um, they were very cultural they about it, you know. And of course, since then we've had independent groups start up everywhere. So yeah, it is what it is. I did want to ask you all this: a concept of the old religion. But they're not connected to the druids that no. Julius Caesar was talking. Do about you ever at struggle? All. <laughs> and this might just be a personal thing. So I'm asking viewers. I'm asking Ellie and Brian. Do you ever struggle sometimes when you are like challenged by the sort of helter skelter nature of the modern magical community or paganism or witchcraft? It's a very small world very small and it is new in the sense of it is not it does not have the long held cultural institutions trees that have other brains. religions do yeah trees stuff like that brains. right we don't have churches seminaries mosques you know thousand year old synagogues like we just don't have these things do you sometimes feel a sort of ache for that or an emptiness a little bit about like there's not enough your religion has to be so home based so just you and your people like it, no cuz i'm in a little bubble large. where i've got people like you so i don't i don't experience i don't experience that sort of weaker side of things the people i'm surrounded with believe you know? so you don't hunger for that to be larger um, not anymore I when i was younger i did realize. when i was younger i wanted to see the craft stand toe to toe and reclaim its former glory but the truth of the matter is it didn't have a former glory you know and i don't mean that in the sense that i'm saying it's all modern I, the craft i think is is meant to be small groups it's meant to be autonomous it's meant to be we don't want in the shadows super freaks anyway yes i don't think we are we should i think if the idea of this ever became orthodox religion it would lose everything about it that makes it magical and special mm. and unique mm. that's very true um, however as far as goddess religions and things like that i would like to see a time when there could be a temple or temples to the goddess that are functioning oh, yeah. um you know i get other people might say well what about gods what about peg well i'm just going to tell you all point blankly you know my goddess loves everyone i'm not so sure my god does that's true and um, i'm not going to get into it any further than that that's true. um but um he likes special people and he likes her and he likes animals um, but she loves everyone, and I could see. I think the world needs that. The god needs healing, but he can only have it at the hands of Isis. What about you, Ellie? Do you ever feel those large institutional before, gaps? Before I moved to New Orleans, huge because I was living in Northwest Florida. I grew up in Northwest Florida, a uh, really small-minded area, just because it was a smaller population, not because the, the people were unlovely. I won't say that. Just in, you know, not worldly. Um, I felt really a big, a big schism between me and the rest of my occult brethren. But now that I live in New Orleans, I'm surrounded by witches. And me too, I'm really happy, and I haven't thought about that in a while. I feel really supported in the city in my strange religion and activities. I keep myself very separated from everything else, except for Hexfest and WitchCon. I don't really have any interaction with the larger people, the larger community, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I do educational things like this. I don't do other people's stuff. 
Uh, I'm perfectly happy that way. <laughs> I like being private about my magic. So unless you're in another coven that I'm actually working with, you don't enter into my field of giving to blankety blanks. Um, but I, you know, yeah, I'd like to see goddess consciousness be more important in the world again to counterbalance the, the patriarchal stuff that's already going go on. To there. Summer camp. Well, not just that. So Heather brought it up as a seminary. There is a pagan seminary called Cherry Hill, but it's not accredited and it's not the same level as a, as a traditional seminary. Um, Everything about that makes me cringe. You know, it just doesn't have the same academic profile as a traditional Christian seminary. But I get what you're saying, but I'm not just talking about that. I mean, Christians and Jews and Muslims and Hindus in their respective areas have just enormous institutional support. If you're grieving, if you're sick, if there is something mm -hmm. you need, mm -hmm. if there is a community need, if there is something going on, there are all of these institutions. I do feel sometimes the path we walk is a little more difficult, as it should be, because it's a path of initiation. It's not a path for everyone. I accept that wholeheartedly. But I do think sometimes that that lack of, of connection to larger institutions can sometimes create these pockets of, for, I hate saying this because it sounds ableist and stupid, but there are these pockets of like crazy yeah. that pop up mm -hmm. because there's not a larger sort of community to keep it in check at any level. So you could have a community that's like just kind of going rancid because it's not connected to anything, educated, it doesn't have outside sources, well, I think and that, that worries me. Sometimes. It exists, and I think the crazy exists in every religious movement. 100%. Yes. I think maybe, because there's tons of really crazy Christians out there. Oh, yeah. I think maybe in the academic sense, they may be drowned out by larger voices. You know, um, you know no one's sitting there... You know, when we're talking the subject of Catholicism, there are a lot of educated priests that can speak on the subject that are going to drown out that lady that's, like, the super screaming, crazy. Yeah, like, yes. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in that sense. But, you know, you can't get rid of the... Spirituality but, but attracts crazy in, people. At the Alexandria tradition, covens uh, are autonomous. We don't snoop up on each other. There is no uh, authoritative yes. body that says this is right and this is wrong. I love that. Thing. That's so, freedom. So that's part of our... Bible, and part of the, so you know, and part of the reason why I like way. that is when you do have, you know, we do have covens <clears throat> that stay connected and work together and, you know, I wouldn't say we don't snoop on each other, but, you know, we are all autonomous. Um, and if you get a bad egg, well, mm -hmm. you, yeah. don't, you don't have to claim it. You don't have to be connected to it. It's its own thing. You know, just, oh, they're autonomous. They don't have anything to do with me. It's its own you know? egg. <laughs> Don't worry, yes. Levi. I know your coven will always be good. But you're, you're still <laughs> not you. getting the point, Levi, about this body of something of something historical, something ancient, something that's created its own power through time. And we yes. don't really have that. Like, and nor do we have sort like Hogwarts. Of the support system beneath it, the sort of nuts and bolts of it. Forget about the yeah, ideology. Right, right. It's not even ideological. It's practical. You know, it's like we don't have the, the, the church committee that's going to help you build your house again, you know. No. So, and that's a difficult path, I think, sometimes. And it's why I see so many people on the path of, and so this is a little bit of a soapbox here, but why I see so many people who decide they're going to follow the path of initiation, become a witch, or they're going to become a pagan, or they're going to become a magician, and they just end up burning out like a tiny candle because they don't have support systems. The religion doesn't really have that to give them. So I do, you know, sort of say... That is a new thing. We're talking about the old religion. Mm -hmm. The Temple of Isis, this is something in the world. They world. would have had a network. They yeah. took care of each other. Yeah. They brought each other food. Like they healed each other. Freemasons. They were, a, they were called sodalities. It was also a like network. So they had... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were all yeah. connected. You, and they had retreat centers, which I did not mm -hmm. know until I read this book by Turkin. That was a big deal in the cult of Isis and the old mystery cults in Rome. They had like hostels. And people would make pilgrimage, and you could eat there oh. and pray. But one of the healing techniques there. was to sleep. To get the, the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get the dreams. And we, um, we lack that a little sometimes. That's yeah, you know, we're not function. You know, we're not <clears throat> quite straight. You know, uh, straight functioning in that same sort of way. Our nucleus is more about um, within that small. You know, we function more like a little monastery or something like that. Yeah, but we are a little um, monastery. WitchCon and Hexfest and yeah. here in New Orleans, this little There's enclave. Time. I'm going to say something mean, very unpopular for someone. You know, being exposed, I, I loved WitchCon, but being exposed to that larger nucleus reminds me why I avoid it. 
You know, it's fine for that time. You meet some very, very magical people. You meet some very wonderful people. You know, I know I'm carrying the direct opposite spirit. I think, you know, I'm glad we don't have what Levi's talking about because it comes at great cost. Because <laughs> you can censor you know, who participates, uh, maybe. No, because it's participate. what I'm seeking in my religion is not mm-hmm. community, right? That's a different thing. That's why I would have joined the Masons. You know, I'm not saying I don't crave community. Just that my spiritual quest for the Holy Grail isn't about human companionship, you know, um, and I think that that needs to remain very small in the spirit of witchcraft for you to get it that way, authentically. You know, you get in large groups of anything, especially witches, it's, it's not, it is going to become toxic. It's been proven time and, and time and again. And I'm not a joiner. But However, as far as like church. a temple network or a community that a, a different kind of tem- community that people could plug into. I'd probably do that if it was in the nature of the right thing. Yes. You know, because it's not that I'm anti-community. I just don't put your peanut butter in my chocolate. Like, I don't want to mix my witchcraft with some sort of larger community. I think... It, I think oh, no, I don't believe that at all. And I'm no, not no. saying you do. Yeah, no, no, no. I think a, a question I asked Maxine once, and I think, uh, I can't remember whether it was private or in an interview, I don't really remember, something like, what, you know, how would you feel about a big uh, pagan temple? What would you think of that? You know, and she said, please don't invite me. You know, yeah. and because uh, they would all fight. It would just be a horrible thing. Because the problem is, is like, we're trying to create this illusion that we're all one thing when we're not. No. We're basically casting our net over everything pre-Christian and yep. then things that are built on fantasy and romanticism and sometimes childs. <laughs> and we're leaping that together and tying up and saying we're all one thing. You're talking yeah. about people who have extremely diversely different religious beliefs. I mean, mermaids and unicorns are in that same net. It really? Right. Yes. You know, but it'd be like saying, you know... <laughs> Let's have an orthodox religious community. So every, every major world religion is going to be one thing. This has been tried in some things, but it's not really a community. A community is like a family, right? And that just doesn't exist in any spiritual sense outside of organized religion. And then it's problematic. You know, and you have to have real leadership. So to do that, to have a pagan community, you'd have to have a pagan leadership. You can't have a family without some sort of direction. and It's never going to happen. You know, what we have is we've got festivals, we've got things like WitchCon, we've got, I'm, I've gone on my own bag, my again, sorry. We've I'm gone, you know, all these it. things. So I'd say that's something different. That's I'd say modern. that the yeah. idea that all these things are one thing, we're supposed to somehow, you know, somebody at WitchCon was saying, well, what if we need to get into legal battles for special rights? I'm going to call the, uh, the ACLU, I'm not calling the Pagan Federation of something because they don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> if I need help legally in a religious I'm battle, a I'm calling the Jews, I'm not calling the Pagan Federation. Okay. You know, I'm calling somebody who's got money and cares about human rights. So I'm all for fighting human rights, but human rights should be about all religions, not like, let's make a niche thing about paganism. That'll show them, you know? So, no, it's just, it's not realistic. It doesn't work. That's usually people who just want to have a club. You know, I'm going to fight, for, I'm going to fight for pagan rights, so I'm going to make a club and I'm going to be the leader of it. You know, it's, it's always the little caveat, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm here to build a community. We're going to have a council. We're going to have a council. We're going to have meetings. Let me ask this to Levi real quick to follow up on your question. Did you find that when you were studying Catholicism? Did you find the institutional support? You mean when I was a practicing Catholic? Weren't you studying well, they have I mean, leadership. You were, but you yeah. were they literally have a singular leader. So and they do have a community. But you were considering yeah. going uh, in it for, for real, right? I mean, I was a practicing Catholic. I mean, I know, but for What do you mean for real? I was a devout Catholic. She doesn't priest. know about those people. To become a priest or something. She's, yes, yes, I to wanted to be a priest. To take it on as like that was priest. the mantle of what you would be priesthood for. You literally sound like someone who's barely yes. encountered Catholicism. To be like she's from some I island, but take it on your in I'm your not, world. I'm, I'm not no. exposed to it. I'm a confirmed that. Catholic, <laughs> uh, which I was a convert. So did it, Protestant did it background. Feed Didn't you people eat those cakes? Um, you you want the honest truth? Uh, far more, far more. Um, I think most Christians have that experience. If well, you're Catholics a, are very different than most Christians. Mm, yeah. I, I just yeah. I was a member of a Lutheran yeah, church for a while too, and if know. something went Lutheran's wrong, Lutheran's different than most Christians. You're talking about organizations that have a single leader or a single leadership. Sure. A tr- you know a 
organized even tradition. Just the local, tra- but yeah, the Pope's not who's bringing me casseroles, though. No, so that's not. But it holds it all know, together. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. The Pope's was not that, who's bringing that me was casseroles. Not in Louisiana. That was in the bishop is not even North the one Carolina. bringing me casseroles. Which state were you in? Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, the sorry. sweet old ladies of the who's church got a crush on the bishop are bringing you <laughs> casseroles. Right. So if you're asking, did I feel more morally supported? Did it's I have got more resources? One hundred percent. They have those in place. One hundred percent. You know, there's no witches' hospitals. No. You know, no. Uh, somebody asked once the question, "What does witchcraft do to the world? Where are your hospitals? What are your things?" And you have to admit that we don't have them, and you know, we're not going to have them. I got a clinic. <laughs> not to, I got it's a not clinic. our thing. Come on over. Um, you know, when you and I were toying with joining the Masons, that's why I want to yeah. do it. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with community. If I were to do something next in the world outside of witchcraft, I would. If I had enough money, I would build a gigantic marble temple to the goddess that would service many goddess faiths, you know, and that would be my big community thing. That would be a community type thing. It wouldn't I'm be an gonna, Alexandrian temple because we shouldn't have temples like that. Um, I'm going to so, do the interior but, design. You know, I believe you, Ellie. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think that that's... I think that the problem is is that's different than saying, you know, a Alexandrian and a Dianic... And a Asa true, Asa true yeah. and a druid all the same. are all the same thing, and they can be considered the same thing just because we're not Christians. No, I don't believe that. Here's, here's what I'm going to do if I win the lottery. I'm stupid. Gonna, I'm going to build a Western mystery tradition school, but it's going to have a lot of land, and it's going to teach gardening, herbalism, metal smithing, working with animals, and all going the to different have crafts. Origins. Orgies at night, bonfires. <laughs> she just rolled it right in there, didn't she? <laughs> Making our own instruments, growing our own food. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a hands-on school teaching all of the um, occult arts by hand. <laughs> by hand. Yeah. Hearts and hands. We'll have some public Home rituals. Making. We'll make hearts we'll and hands. We'll have some nighttime orgies and fires. So we are approaching the end, and I wanted to sort of end on. This we we titled this. I know. I don't have our next subject, so I'll have to just. I know. I won't be here next Friday. I don't think any of us will because it's a a Mardi Gras thing, isn't it? No, Mardi Gras Mm -hmm. is over after Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, but all right. Well, we won't be here next Friday because I'll be gone. I'm out of the city. But um, I want to say, ending back, we titled this whole show the old religion, right? And it is a term that even if we don't use frequently, is part of our religious DNA as witches. I used to say it. Yeah, and it's it's in our Mm -hmm. elders' writings. What makes you want the old religion over the new? What makes you seek out the older, what may be older, what may be... No, for me, it was uh, first, I was first attracted to witchcraft because of magic, but what made me actually, but I was also studying other occult things. Um, What made me actually immerse myself in witchcraft was the goddess. And I've told that story, Mm -hmm. I won't go into the whole story. I was 15, I read Raymond Buchan's Complete Book of Witchcraft, and that that was the hook, line, and sinker for me. Um, that's what drew me in. Okay. What about you, Ellie? I wanted older gods. I did, and I really researched and read backwards, and I thought, what about early man? What about 200,000 years ago? What were they doing? That's what I want. That's really what motivated me as a little kid. I just wasn't happy with the current storyline. I was just like... It's not very attractive, no, is it? No. Especially the Jesus part of it with the crucifixion and all that stuff is horrible. <laughs> and hell, we have a dying God too, though. Jeez. So yeah, but it's not. It. It's I, but we, we have a dying God too. Yeah, um, but anyway, so I that's think what I wanted. I don't think I still, she means the imagery. I, I know. I, I know. still want the old religion. I still think about those little Venus of of Vellendorf. Um, yeah, you know, when I'm mother. thinking about the goddess. I'm we had a religion. crucifix on my wall when I was a child, and I asked my mom, "Who is that?" She said, well, that's Jesus. I said, who's that? And my dad said, we're raising heathens. You know, we need to get these kids to church. And my mom was like, that's God. You know, he died for our sins or something. And I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally, I was very little, but I you have You are that generation memory. that was unchurched. That yes. Like, yeah. No catechesis, no religious I'm education. Too. Don't you love that? Yeah. Well, my family was Christian, but we didn't start going. My dad got saved when I was 13. So apparently when... Before I was born, he went through a very religious phase. And then around the time I was 13, he got saved by a TV evangelist. So there was a few years of weird. Um, and I, you know, I immersed myself into Christianity. Um, and then I hit the age of reason. <laughs> I still have a soft spot for, um, for Christianity and Christian theology in many ways. And I've made peace with that. Um, I just, it will always be a part of my spiritual DNA. But um, I think for me, 
the old religion? Like, why am I in the old religion? Why do I seek out the old religion? Um, it's not that. <laughs> why do I seek out the old religion? Uh, it's 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 like reading about the cult of Eleusis or reading about any of those. That's where you went to have the experience, right? I kept trying to have it in Catholicism. I kept trying to have it in other places. It just didn't click. You know, um, they really did believe that you could have these, you know, the, the old witches or the old priests or the old initiates really did believe that you could inhale that incense and say those prayers and, you know, use those, you know, flogs or whatever they used, whatever method they used, and you were going to see God in that statue and Homegirl was going to tell you And have things. you? Yes, I have. And I, think, yes. and I think that's why I have to stay and why yes. I love it is because it's just... It happens if you do it right, and you really do give yourself over to the path of initiation. She shows up on that bark. Right? Well, anyway, we don't know what the next episode's going to be, but it won't be next Friday. A bit sporadic, and then I'm traveling at some point, so we'll, we'll keep you all posted on what that's going to be. But can I say one final message? Yeah, you also yes. wanted to say that. I just wanted to say yeah. that we left this comment for the end of the show, so it didn't end up being a political discussion at all. Yes. That's not our point. We are aware of what's going on in Ukraine today and Thursday, and we would just like to say to our brothers and sisters who might be Gardnerian or Alexandrian or who are witches and pagans in the world and in Ukraine, we recognize there's some really difficult things going on, and we didn't want to have the show without noticing Absolutely. that we see you and we see what's happening. And on my page, Blessings. there's a wonderful video, if you're on my Facebook, of a Ukrainian woman going up to Russian soldiers and cursing them with sunflower seeds. The statement she makes. I know. So you guys should watch that. It's very powerful. She but might have been a witch. Maybe she Sounded kind of like a little crazy witch it. going out there. I'm here for Put it. these in your pockets and lay down and die. And the flowers will grow. They'll grow around you. <laughs> yes. So um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we will see you next time. It will be posted on social media what the next topic is and when our next show will be. It will not be next Friday, but I'm so glad you joined us here to talk about La Vecchia Religione, the old religion. Uh, have a wonderful night and Have we will a wonderful see you all. Bye.